The Listening Heart with Pastor Randy Dignan. Hello, I'm Randy Dignan, and welcome to The Listening Heart. Today, I'm excited about this program because, of course, we'll wrap up the program with sign language class. But in just a little while, we're going to have an interview segment with my father, Professor Arthur Dignan. He's been a professor of sign language for many years, and he's going to talk a little bit about sign language as a professor and what it's meant to him as a deaf person also. When I think about the subject of language, it's, it's something I think we take for granted in our daily lives. Whether you live in America or you live in Europe or you live some other part of this world, whether you're deaf or hearing, think about how important language is to you and to me. We're able to communicate with people we love because of language. We're able to understand what they're trying to communicate with us because of language. Language is a beautiful thing. Language is written. Language is spoken. Language can be signed. Language can be communicated in such powerful ways. You can write a note. You can receive a note. You can speak over the phone. Language is powerful. Unfortunately, sometimes language is used in a bad way. There's what we call bad language, right? Could I, could I remind you of something that Jesus Christ did with the subject of language? When Jesus came to this earth, he spoke a language that was a little different than people were used to hearing. You see, people were used to everything being black and white and law. And when Jesus came, he spoke what's called heart language. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, Paul wrote it like this. He says, now we have three things, the bite of faith, hope, charity with these three. But the greatest of these is charity. I have four children, and long before my four children ever said, I love you, Daddy, I was speaking I love you to them. In fact, I was speaking it to them while they were in the womb of my wife. When they were born, I was able to hold them and kiss them and be affectionate toward my four children. I have three girls and one boy, and, and to show them that love and speak that love. And guess what? They were not able to communicate that verbally by language at first. None of my babies were born saying, I love you, Daddy. But you know what? I believe they spoke heart language. That's why you can walk into a nursing home and meet somebody who's lonely and show them love without saying a whole lot of words, just being there. You know what that is? That's heart language. That's why I can fly to the Philippines alone and walk into a room with several dozens of Filipinos and looking at each other and wondering who are they, and they look and say, who's this big American that's here? And we look at each other, but by day number two, we become like family and friends because we're all saved by the same blood of Jesus Christ. You know what that is? That's heart language. That's why I can fly to Ecuador. They speak Spanish down there. Even the sign language is a little bit different. But by day number two, we're like family. It's like we've known each other all our lives. You know why? Because of Jesus' beautiful gift of heart language. It's a powerful gift. My mom and dad don't even have to sign I love you to me. They can look at me and communicate that language through their heart. And that's what made Jesus so special. You see, heart language is something that is demonstrated. That's the first thing I want you to think about today. God says, I love you, but I'm not just going to say it to you. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, God says, I'm going to demonstrate my love. I'm not just going to talk. I'm going to show it to you. And that's heart language. You see, a mom shows that heart language when she gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning to take care of that baby that's crying or feed that baby. A dad demonstrates heart language by getting up to go to work to support his family. You see, a lot of times heart language isn't necessarily broadcasted. It's not necessarily spoken. It's not written, but it is demonstrated all the time in day-to-day -day activities. Heart language is powerful. Secondly, heart language is something that helps us understand things in life better. Of course, I use John 3.16 again. You begin to understand why would Christ die on the cross for me and you? Why? Oh, because God's so loved. That's why. You see, the word starts, John 3, 16 starts with the word for, for, or because. Because God so loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank God for that. You see, there's lots of things that we communicate that don't necessarily come from heart language. If I tell my children right now, go clean your room. That's language, not necessarily heart language. But it's a command, it's understood, and it better be carried out. But I can tell my kids, come here, hey, I want you to know I love you, and I cherish you. Now, they may have heard that because I spoke it or signed it, but now something comes into play that's very powerful. 
as I said, hey, to my children, I love you, heart language takes over. It's demonstrated. When my kids hear it, now they know, oh, yeah, it's backed up by activities. Daddy really does love us. He provides for us. He cares for us. And we learn that beautifully from God. I can say to my kid, hey, get out of the road right now. I can command him, get out of that road. Don't put your finger in that electric socket. Then I can explain to them later the reason why I gave you such a strong, emphasized command, and I might even sound distressed or angry, it's because heart language took over. You see, when you speak to people with heart language, it's received a whole lot better. My dad was a pretty strict disciplinarian, and I was a very honorary kid. And I remember many times my dad having to punish me and discipline me and send me to my room. And I'd be laying there in bed crying as a little boy, but I'll never forget my dad coming in the room, kneeling by my bed, turn on the little lamp because he had a sign. He couldn't just speak it. And he would look at me and say, son, you disappointed me again but I would never trade you for a million dollars. I always wondered if he would trade me for two million, but that's, that's beside the point. But honestly, though, stop for a second. When Dad said that, he spoke from heart language. I knew, you know what, I'll take the disciplinary acts if I can hear that from my dad. By the way, I didn't hear it with my ears. I didn't even see it with my eyes. He signed it to me. But here's where I heard it, right there. Boy, heart language is powerful. So powerful. That's the difference between Jesus and the Pharisees of his day. That's why the multitudes came to Jesus. That's why the little children wanted to be around Jesus. Jesus spoke a language that was so new to the world. It was foreign to all the traditionalists. Jesus spoke heart language. And number one, again, heart language is demonstrated. Number two, it helps us understand the things of life better. Number three, heart language has the potential to be communicated by all. Some of you are sitting there saying, oh, I've never been to school to learn heart language. It's not taught in schools. I've never been to university. I don't have a degree that says the bachelors of arts of science, the study of heart language. No. It's a language that is potentially able to be understood by all people. What do I have to do to qualify to understand or speak heart language? You have to have a pulse and breathe. That's it. That's why even a baby has the power to look at their their mom in the eyes and their dad in the eyes and just melt a heart. And that's why an elderly person can put their hand, a gentle touch can immediately communicate heart language. It doesn't matter if you're an infant or if you're in your 90s or if you're you're in your midlife. It doesn't matter if you're a parent or a grandparent. It doesn't matter if you're successful or not successful. Anybody in this world can communicate heart language. And by the way, if you're speaking heart language and understanding heart language, you are successful in God's book. It can be communicated and understood by all. And finally, number four, Heart language has got to be brought back again. The greatest enemy of heart language is actually sometimes just regular language itself. Because we feel like the power of words is more important than the power of the intent behind the word. I spoke what I said. I had a husband tell me one time, I told my wife the day we married I loved her, and if I ever changed my mind, I'd let her know. Well, they're having marital problems. Guess what? You need to communicate that every day. You need to demonstrate that every day. Heart language is something we need back in the White House, in Congress, in the Senate, in the governor's mansions, in school systems, especially in churches. A lot of churches today have become very robotic and very formal and very traditional. They've forgotten about the power of heart language. Preachers, I call you to preach again from the heart. I call you people in the churches to listen again from the heart. It doesn't matter if it's English or Spanish or French or Russian or sign language. Hey, we need to speak. Speak heart language, and we need to hear heart language again. That, my friend, will bring revival again in America. And that's why Jesus was a difference maker on this earth during his ministry. Can I encourage you today, close this out by reminding you of John 3.16 again. I never get tired of that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How could God say that? He didn't really say it. He showed it from his heart. The power of heart language. The person who taught me that will be next, my dad. Stay tuned. God bless, and let's all work on our heart language. See you in a few. Hello, I'm Pastor Nick Dignan of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. You may have seen my brother's program, The Listening Heart. Well, we just want everyone to know that if there's anything we can do to be a help to you and your family, please feel free to contact us by going to our website at www.bbcjc.com. Or if you're ever in our area, 
Here's a church that loves and cares for people. We'd love to meet you and have the chance to visit with you and worship the Lord with you. May God bless you and your family. And take care. Welcome back. So glad to have you join this part of the program. And I am thrilled to introduce my hero and my personal American Sign Language instructor, my father, Art Dignan. Good to have you here today. Well, first of all, I want to just say a little bit about his history. My father uh, uh, graduated from high school with a, probably a second grade reading level, and he self-taught himself to uh, succeed. He, he went into college, got a bachelor's degree, ended up getting two master's degrees. He's been a professor at the university level. He's taught at the deaf school level, and uh, he's my personal sign language instructor. I grew up learning sign language from my dad and, of course, my mom. People ask me all the time, who taught you sign language? The best person that could possibly teach me that, my dad. We just got through preaching about the subject of heart language and how important language is, and I want you to give you a little history of American Sign Language and how important it is to you. A long time ago, people used to call uh, American Sign Language bad names. They, their descriptions of American Sign Language were more in a negative light. They didn't call it American Sign Language. It was just a deaf sign language. Um, it was considered a, a minimal language. It was considered a low-functioning language or a, a non-value type language and that it would actually cause to the digression of speech abilities and, and learning how to speak. And of course, as time has passed, we have found now that American Sign Language has now become the language of today for deaf people. And that's, it's got its own title now, American Sign Language, and it's a beautiful, fascinating language. And uh, it has really evolved uh, throughout history. Uh, so much so that it's becoming a popular language subject at the university level. It's now accepted as one of the foreign languages that you can teach. Of course, I still think it's funny that it's called a foreign language because it's actually not a foreign language because it's called American Sign Language. Maybe it should be a language that stands on its own, not like other languages that originate in other countries. However, though, American Sign Language has become very popular and a lot of people think it's a, it's a wonderful and fascinating language. People are joining and learning sign language a lot, um, and it's been improved a lot. And uh, it's, I can see a huge difference from the time when I was young learning American Sign Language to today and the progress, and I'm very happy and proud of American Sign Language. People ask me all the time, which is my native language? And since I was born into a deaf family and my parents are deaf, you taught me American Sign Language. It is your native language, but... I want you to explain a little bit briefly about how you weren't even allowed to use your own language in public when you were young. It's true, uh, they, they thought that sign language would lead to maybe a decline of speech skills or speaking skills or even listening skills or hearing skills. And of course, to hearing people in those days, they thought it was very important to say, you know what, we've got to stop sign language uh, get rid of it and teach these deaf people to speak and then maybe try to get them to hear. And they kept forcing, I guess, a, a square peg into a round hole and they found that it didn't work that way. And finally, if you want to educate a deaf child, you've got to use their language, American Sign Language. And it wasn't until they were willing to be honest about that and find out that American Sign Language is the best venue or tool or language for deaf people to learn uh, education, to be educated. And so the attitude toward American Sign Language is so different than it was before. I love to tell funny stories. I remember even when I grew up in the 80s, uh, sign language was still uh, kind of unique. And today it's very accepted. Um, but people would stare at us at restaurants, and people would be so impressed. And, and you many times had fun with that. You'd point to the sky and get the whole restaurant to look up to the ceiling. Or, or you know, we had fun with that. But as you think about language itself, in our family, in our home, you had... Your wife, my mom is deaf. You had two hearing sons and one deaf daughter. What was language like in our house? I know I could answer that too, but I'd rather them hear it from you. What was language like in the house, and how did you emphasize communication in our home and our family? It's what I call total language or total communication. It's something that is understood by all the families of different languages. You know, I have the two boys that are hearing, and then there's three of us that were deaf in the house. And there was really no conflict among us because we started off with American Sign Language from the time they were young as their native language. And of course, I was a little worried about Randy, especially my oldest boy, and then of course, Randy's brother Nick's uh, verbal skills or speech skills. And so obviously they were able to watch some television 
and learn some speech skills from that. We also got them interacting with hearing peers. We started them in preschool a little early, so they were able to pick up their speech skills. Um, and so I guess you could call Randy as maybe his native language is American Sign Language and English at the same time. Um, and for us, of course, being deaf, American Sign Language was our native language, and maybe English would be my second language. And so communication worked out very fluently at home. We had no problem among the family. We were able to communicate very well. In fact, <clears throat> even some of our family members, like grandparents, who happened to be deaf also, um, and of course that definitely made Randy and Nick say, you know, my, our whole family's deaf, so I've got to learn uh, sign language and communicate via sign language because of all the deaf relatives too. So it really worked out great and it gave, uh, there was excellent support in our family. Well, obviously me and Nick were very outnumbered too. A lot of deaf people there and I, I loved it. Uh, people ask me all the time, what is the best way to learn sign language? Oh, I get asked that all the time. How do you learn? Of course, my wife shared that before on this program, but you are the professor. My dad is a professor of sign language. In fact, still teaches sign language class at our church. Um, how, you tell people now, how's the best way to learn sign language? The best way to learn sign language from a deaf person himself, period. Very simple. Let a deaf person teach you. A lot of times hearing people try to take over, and I don't think they have any ill intentions, but they just think, oh, I know enough sign language that I can teach it to other hearing people. Um, it's okay with me, but I, there are some concerns. It does bother me just a little bit because when it comes to questions, specific questions regarding sign language itself, how's a hearing person going to maybe answer that question right? Um, they may give invalid answers, and, and it may not be uh, the answers that they need to hear. Of course, we deaf people have the knowledge of it because it is our native language in regards to sign language. We're able to answer those questions and address the issues that may be asked. So I say let the deaf people teach sign language themselves, and uh, it works out for the best. And still sometimes today, when there's deaf people around able to teach uh, without intending to, maybe not on purpose, uh, hearing people kind of put brush the deaf people aside and say, here, we'll teach it, and in most cases, it's not as successful as if they were to hear a, or learn sign language from a deaf person themselves, and it makes sense. Um, I'm not going to teach English. English is my second language. I don't feel like I'm qualified to teach English. I'll let the hearing people teach English because that's your native language. But hold on a second now. American Sign Language is my language. Let me teach American Sign Language because it is my native language. True, and of course, I learn sign language by being around deaf people. And really, uh, I, I find myself when I meet hearing people, I don't sign. The hearing people, we just talk. I'm able to speak. But when I'm around deaf people, I sign, and that's where I learn it from the deaf. That's a great point. Um, sign language is, is so beautiful because I, th I think in spoken English, a lot of times as a preacher, I use voice inflection to emphasize a point. Sometimes I can make my voice sound excited. I can make my voice sound calm. I can make my voice sound angry or happy. Explain how ASL uses facial expressions to to demonstrate inflection that the hearing spoken language uses. A lot of people talk about uh, tones or pitches or, or uh, inflection in English and speaking. And of course, we understand all that, but people don't realize that American Sign Language, hey, hold on a second now. We have our own inflection. We have our own tones. We have our own emphasis, but it's all based on facial expressions. And it's amazing how the facial expressions sometimes do look weird to maybe the casual observer when they first see it. Like, for example, uh, sign language requires a lot of tongue involvement for identification. Um, they'll use your, you'll use your eyeballs. You'll use uh, the blinking of an eye. You'll use the, maybe the twitching of your nose. Uh, you might even use uh, your lips pursed in a certain way for emphasis on letters like M or S or E. And so when I teach hearing people a lot of these things, I, I warn them. I say, now, wait a second. Don't get scared because a lot of times hearing people think, I'm not going to make facial expressions like that. But wait a second. Wait a second. When you speak, it's acceptable. I mean, your tongue is hidden inside, and we can't see the tongue movement that's making your voice uh, change or the vocal cords. I mean, here's my demonstration right now of the tongue. If I open up your mouth, I might see vocal cords and tongues working hard. Well, in sign language, excuse me now, that comes from facial expressions. We're able to emphasize a point. See my face now? Ow, oh my, wow, ooh, painful expressions, or, you know, oh, it hurts, or, or and so we're able to emphasize excitement and emphasize uh, the emotion being broadcasted or displayed 
through the visual aspect. You may not hear it with your ears, but you're hearing it, so to speak, with your eyeballs. And so hearing people are starting to realize, wait a second now, it is pretty amazing. So they graduate with an American Sign Language degree, and they start using facial expressions and their tongue movement. And, and I stop them sometimes and say, wait a second now, I just saw you. You used facial expressions. You used your tongue. Yeah, ha, ha, you did it. And I bet you enjoy that as a professor. We're almost out of time for this segment, but real quickly explain how important ASL is to you as a church or a Christian. I mean, so many deaf people don't know the gospel, and yet you're able to not hear but see the gospel in sign language. How important is ASL in the church setting? Well, you, it's a known uh, statistic that there's one hearing preacher to 400 hearing people across this country. Uh, that's a ratio. There's also... Uh, lots of different religions that reach out to the hearing people. When it comes to the deaf, there's one preacher to 9,000 deaf people. And, I mean, it's, it's amazing when you think about how if those preachers that are trying to reach those 9,000 deaf people as far as the ratio, they might not even be able to sign. they got to use interpreters. And deaf people, uh, boy, it's scary to think that they might be misunderstanding God's word. And then, you know, we got to use interpreters, and we appreciate interpreters, but, boy, let's be honest, deaf people, just like hearing people, would rather hear it directly from the preacher rather than going through a second person. And so most deaf people would prefer a deaf person themselves, which we have several deaf pastors out there, and they work fine, and we're very grateful for that. And, of course, I'm blessed to have two sons who are both what we call CODAs, children of deaf adults, and because they both are able to sign and they both are preachers, they both were born in those two languages we already discussed in this segment, um, they're able to communicate the gospel in sign language and communicate it in English, and so that's exciting. And so deaf people can understand everything from that, uh, from people like Kodos who can get the gospel to them, and so we're thankful for that. So everything works out when we see them preaching the gospel in our language. And that, that ratio, that statistic I just shared with you about the 1 to 9,000 deaf people, we think it's improving now because of technology, because of different things like that. It's exciting how, how um, deaf people are getting reached better now um, than today than probably it was when that statistic was taken approximately 10 years ago. And so it's exciting to see that deaf people are being reached with the gospel. Amen. That's great. Language is important. That's how we communicate the gospel. And I was, it's been an honor to have you here today, Dad. Stick around for sign language class. We'll see you in a few. God bless. Thanks for watching. I always get asked, how can I find more information about deaf people and sign language? Well, the good news is the internet has a lot of the information. Just hit in your search engine, American Sign Language, and you'll find out all kinds of information. Also, each state has its own commission for the deaf and school for the deaf. So I would encourage you to check those things out. They have a lot of deaf activities, deaf functions, sometimes free sign language classes. And I would encourage you to find those organizations and, and get together with some of those functions and be exposed to that. God bless. Have a great day. Welcome back to class. Good job. You're not tardy this time. We've well, been able to see a message on the subject of heart language, and you saw my father talk about the importance of American Sign Language. So let's start right there with that sign. American, I love the sign for America. It's a beautiful sign of unity. You join your fingers together, and you spread it as if you're spreading across a map of America. American. So that's American Sign Language. American Sign Language. Now you saw uh, my dad talked about the subject of facial expressions and how important it is. And, and, of course, in the message today, we talked about heart language and demonstrations. We'll get to those signs in a second. But one of the things I used was a sign understood. Sign language or heart language, I'm sorry, heart language is understood by people. Now watch this. I love the sign for understand. Facial expressions are important here. You ever, as a parent, try to get that kid to understand what you're trying to say? And facial expressions become very important. Now look how boring understand. This is a sign for understand. You just... Flick up your pointer right there in front of your, right in front of your head. Understand. But look how boring it is if I don't have facial expressions. Watch this. That's boring. Facial expressions are important. Someone's trying to explain something to me, especially when it comes to computers. Oh, my. I'm lost. And recently, someone was explaining to me about something on a computer, and I was like, oh, I understand. The eyebrows raised with it. I understand. I understood. And I think that's why Jesus was so effective when he spoke to people. He spoke from their heart, and people said, I understand. There's a joyous look that comes across your face. I understand, and my dad talked about that. So you have American Sign Language can be understood if you'll work at it, but thank God heart language is something we all can understand, 
And by the way, heart language will make your facial expression be happy. I understand heart language, and I'm glad I'm able to communicate heart language, and I thank God he communicated heart language to us. So there's the sign for heart, heart. You just take your hand, bend that middle finger, touch your heart. Heart language. Jesus spoke heart language. Jesus expressed heart language. Jesus demonstrated heart language. And we can receive heart language, understand heart language, and we can communicate heart language. How beautiful that sign is. Again, there's a sign for heart language. By the way, heart language isn't necessarily heard, that's ears, seen, your eyes. Heart language isn't necessarily heard or seen, but heart language is felt. Now you see the emphasis there. When I just say heart, it's just a quick touch. But felt or touched is a little bit wider motion. Look at this. Jesus spoke heart language to me, and it touched my heart. Now the facial expressions are important. Jesus spoke heart language to me, and it touched my heart. Oh, thank you so much, Jesus. I understand the heart language Jesus communicates to us. And most of all, it was demonstrated by what he did on the cross. I've taught you that sign before. Demonstrate. It's beautiful. It's like saying, hey, watch this now. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show it to you. Same thing for show. Demonstrate. Jesus demonstrated heart language. Now we are touched by his demonstration of heart language, and now we understand heart language. Those are the signs you saw today in the program. I want to thank you all so much for the feedback we received and even the support. Reminder, this is a viewer-supported ministry. So if you'd like to support and be a partner with us, we'd love to have you. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out online. But most of all, keep your heart listening. God's still speaking to hearts. Make sure our hearts are listening. This is Pastor Randy. Love you. God bless. Make it a great day because he already has. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Listening Heart, you may contact us at www.bbcjc.com. If you would like a DVD copy of this program, please visit our website at www.bbcjc.com. Listening Heart is a viewer-supported ministry.